Yeah, yeah. Y'all know what time it is. You just tuned in to the most exclusive podcast in the city, in the state, in the space, out of space, in your face. Mogul moves only. You did. Yeah. I don't ever do shit at work. You see, I did that shit all the way to the show. And we about to go up today. You said what? I don't ever do shit at work. I don't ever do shit at work. And I got my co-host Tink in the building with me, and you know we got a heavy hit in the game. And we gonna go up today. We gonna talk about some real stuff, some real shit. We gonna have a good time. We gonna make it easy. We gonna have a relax. And I appreciate appreciate y'all tuning in. I'm in here just dealing company Mogul time. moves only. I'm in here just dealing yeah. company time. Yeah. I might just take me an extra break. Yeah. I might eat somebody lunch today. <laughs> I came to work with the cushion. smell this on shit me. Is crazy. I can hope a co-worker don't tell on me. Cause I'll be high now. Before it's time to clock out. It's kinda remind really me of like Afro Man out. before I hey, got baby, uh, what's so that shit? Afro Man. Some girls, Cause, I Cause I got high. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I don't give a damn about this job. Yo, Mario, you can go ahead and turn that down. Again, yo, 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 you just tuned in to the most exclusive podcast, Mogul Moves Only, with your boy, Big D the Mogul, a.k.a. Suge Diddy, a.k.a. Illuminati Jack, a.k.a. Big Thanos, a.k.a. Heaven on Earth, a.k.a. Dry Rub, shawty, why? Because I'm good before the drip, I don't need no saucy under the dead. And I got my co-host with me, the lovely, the most sensational, the beautiful... You gonna say your name, Tinker? Oh, I thought you was gonna say my name for me, Tinker. There you go. What up, though? And we got <laughs> hey, a y'all. crazy guest with us today, man. Introduce yourself. I go by the name of Calamar White, all the way from St. Petersburg, Florida, man. We in this thing. Hey, you know what? I didn't realize you were from Florida. Yeah, man. I could tell now that he said now it. Now he said it. Yeah. But you said St. Petersburg, so you don't say bite. <laughs> yeah, we say all that, man. Bite. I, I lived in South Georgia. That was close enough to Florida. Yeah. They'd be like, hey, cool, I'll be right, bite. Yeah, that's how we talk. That's man. a real thing. Yeah, they really do talk. say bite. Bite, yeah. for real. I thought that was like, you thought applies bullshit. Yeah, nah, that's I thought he was bullshit. For nah, real, nah, I'm Florida. For real. How do you feel about Charlemagne always talking about everybody from the state of Florida? It's crazy. I think he only do that because like one of his best friends is Lil Duval. He from Florida, so he get kind of like he get a pass for talking about people from Florida. It's just like a, a inside joke between him and Lil Duval. That's all. Okay, I got you. I got you. And what about the crazy dress? Like you. You know, shits when y'all. Oh, dreads. yeah, we call them big wicks, man. You know, That's what them is. You yeah. ever had them? Wicks. I had dreads, but I ain't had, like, you know, wicks. And, like, when you see them matted together, mm-hmm. and, like, it's like three or four of them yeah. coming out, we call them fingers. Okay. Fingers. Yeah, fingers. Yeah, them fingers, man. Okay, so they look what? like fingers? Yeah, because they look like fingers, yeah. So, how they do that shit? It's like a bunch of dreads, they rubber band together until they. Until they lock together, yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit is terrible. It's horrible. Nah, it's <laughs> that shit Florida is absolutely thing, terrible. Man. So, I, I guess from Florida. You either had a lime green car or a neon orange car or a yellow car. Like, y'all be on them like Skittle type shit. You either had a donk or a shit. Or what's a donk? A donk is like a cut list. Okay, yeah. My brother had a donk. You feel me? With the roof missing type shit. You got to at least, at least got to be on 26s or better. Okay. Because my brother was um grew up in Tampa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right by me. Like, Tampa and St. Petersburg is like from Fort Worth to Dallas. I was I, I ride with okay. t- Tampa, Ebor City. Yeah, yeah, I was out yeah. there when I was trying to do the NFL thing. My agent had me out there for like a month. And my brother yeah. played for the Buccaneers for a little bit, so I was been a yeah, little t- bit about Tampa, Tampa. Go hard! Shout out to Tampa. Man. Hey man, for real though. So um, I appreciate you coming on the show. For those who don't know, you are a comedian doing your thing, making a wave through the city, man. And that hilarious, hilarious song that we came mm-hmm. in to, man. Tell us a little bit about that song, man. The title of it and how did that come to fruition, like? Uh, it came about, um, you know, when I first started in the comedy shit, you know, I was on flyers here and there. Then I guess I became a threat to people. They started taking me off their shows, so I had to come up with something. And I had got the new iPhone. Well, it didn't want a new iPhone, but I got a new phone, that phone, and I seen that it had GarageBand on it. Mm. You know, GarageBand, it's an app. You can make beats yeah. and make music. So I told myself, like, I'm going to start making music, like funny song, but just a hook, and I'm going to put a video to them. So the first song I made, first song and video I made was about um, how dudes, like when we break up with a female, well, when they break up with us, we don't really be caring. Like, as long as y'all just make sure we straight, like leave us some money, just <laughs> don't leave us. You feel me? So that was the first song. It did some numbers. And then the second song was some, um, 
My Dick Is Too Ashy. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> that was the second song. And then the third song was the Never Do Shit At Work. So when I had posted that, because I had did it at my job, I posted it for my friends to see. So my mom, she left a comment. You know, she was like, son, take this down. You know, people praying on your downfall. Somebody might show your job. And then my homegirl, Queen, she like double back right behind my mom. She was like, bro, make this public. This shit finna go viral. Oh, so shit. it's like, I got the devil and the angel on my shoulders. So I'm like, damn, what I want to do? So who did you go with? Of course I went with her, like my homegirl, Queen. The, is I Queen made, the devil or she the angel? She the devil. Oh, okay. But she is an angel in disguise. But, you know, I made it public. Shout out to Queen. Yeah, she shout out to Queen. Too. I made it public, and then, like I said, it just took off from there. Like, and then, you know, people was, because like I said, I was just doing the hooks, looping the hooks and stuff. So people were like, man, you need to bring up full songs. So I made the full song. I wrote a verse. And y'all just heard some of it, and then it took off from there. So if, if people want to go hear the, uh, the, the full version of the song, where can they go check it out at? Oh, the official video on YouTube with yeah. um, Marvelous Jarvis. Shout out to Marvelous Jarvis. It like it's a whole movement behind it. The official video on YouTube, y'all can go check that out. And you know, see, send me a video, and they all not doing shit at work. And I'm gonna <laughs> post y'all on my Instagram. <laughs> it's a whole challenge going on and everything. I made sure I put the link in the video. So if y'all look down in the bottom at this video, uh, the link to watch the full video, click on that. Go su- support. Make sure y'all subscribe to his page after you click subscribe on ours. Yeah. Yeah, man. So I appreciate you coming out, Tinka. Ashley, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, brought you up. She I sent me the, him. She I sent me the video. And I was like, damn, you know what? He was at our comedy show. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You perform. And that's, you know, you, Queen, Jamel, and uh, mm-hmm. um, Ice Water Jones, yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. and Jameson, though, man. And I appreciate you coming. I was like, hell yeah, he funny as hell. Funny as yeah. shit. So, no lie. I, I was following him, looking at his videos on Facebook, and I was like, you know how some comedians, like, you have to, okay, I'm going to laugh because everybody else laughing, or that was kind of cool. He's, like, genuinely funny. Yeah, like, appreciate really it. Appreciate funny, it. So, yeah. well, uh, annoying thing as a comedian, when people find out you're a comedian, what's the most annoying thing? Tell me a joke, but I got I got a joke for that. <laughs> All right, like, bro, go ahead and tell the joke, because I, I was waiting like, to when say they that. Say, when they say, tell me a joke, I just go, knock, knock. Who there? Interrupting cow. Interrupt Move. Oh, <laughs> <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my go-to joke. And everybody say, tell me a joke then. Like, yeah. <laughs> so we're uh, comedians, man. Um, I know we was talking a lot off camera. Like, how do you go into preparing for your set? Like, you seen Dona Mike? Yeah, yeah, Would that's like, like my. I feel like era. I'm the new Rudy Ray Moore, man. Yeah, okay. I, but I feel like I feel like I'm that nigga for real, man. Like, do you get prepared in the mirror like he was? He yeah, was like, I write my jokes. Um, I I recite them to myself. I perform them in like in in my house, or I um record it on my phone and mm-hmm. just play it back to me so I don't forget the line. Even though I still forget some of the line. Like when I get off stage. I say to myself, like, damn, I'm supposed to say it. But it'll just be like a little ad lib. It don't be like no important part of the joke. But it's like, damn, I could have said that. I should have said I'm supposed to say that. Do you get feedback from people before you perform it? Like, do you make sure, like, do you think it's funny first? Nah, like, when I write my jokes, like, if that shit, that's why, I like, you know, like, Michael Sean, like, when I performed on his show, like, two months ago, when he introduced me, he introduced me as fearless. Because, like, he know, like, I'm saying anything. Like, that shit funny in my head, I'm going to say it. So, you know, a lot of people respect that. Have, you, talk- ever, have you ever bombed a show? Uh, Have I? I don't think so. No, nah, I, ain't, I ain't bombed yet. I ain't going to say yet, but I ain't never bombed on a show. Okay. Because if I feel like I'm bombing, I'm just going to go in the crowd and just talk about people before I even bomb. Because <laughs> <Like, laughs> you know, like, how Dave Chappelle had that incident when he got too high in Detroit. And he was just up on the stage. They start booing his ass. Yeah, that's his fault though. He he I don't necessarily call that a bomb. A bomb is like when you go up there with your set you down pat, you think you finna just kill, and then nobody don't find that yeah. shit funny. That shit was on Dave Chappelle. Like I, you feel me? I, I seen the comedian bomb. Shout out to my guy. I ain't gonna say his name. <laughs> but that first comedian, the first comedy show I threw up there at Hizzy's. Yeah. The first comedian that went, I guess it was his first time ever doing comedy. Oh, he fucked that shit up bad. And then they flagging him in the back like, yo, time up. Like, they doing all the flashing the with light, the lights, yeah. and he mm-hmm. kept going. Then they went up there to get the microphone. He snatched the mic and ran Damn. back. And said, Boy, I was over on the side of the camera <laughs> dying laughing. If that was his first time, though, like, I wouldn't call that a bomb. Well, at least he got out the way. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. the worst has already happened to yeah. you. Yeah, it yeah, could be worse, yeah, yeah. Actually. Hell yeah. Because I read the... 
Like, I'd rather get booed than get silenced. Have you gotten booed before? Nah. No? Okay. Silence. But silence, ooh, well, that's, that's deadly. <laughs> that's, that's, that's that cold <laughs> silence. Just boo me, man. Let me know I'm fucking up. Don't give me no silence because you be up there thinking like, damn, I'm, you know. Well, then uh, it's apparently you ain't doing shit. They ain't laughing, but that silence. Whew. What about hecklers? You had any, like, people that, like, try to steal the show or come back? Did you say some weird shit to you? No, nah, I ain't never had no heckler yet. Not either. yet. Not yet, neither. Nah, not no heckler. Sometimes uh, the empire places they put people out there to heckle you. Yeah, like you know. Yeah, because yeah, I saw I, I saw Eddie Griffin in comedy in show, and I guess it was something in there that happened to be from Kansas City too. So he's like, from saying Kansas City. Eddie was like, "Oh yeah, that's dope, nigga." Blah blah blah. Kansas City in the building, and the nigga kept yelling out. And Eddie <laughs> yeah. fired his ass up, and then they came and snatched the nigga out, but his girl stayed in the show. That nigga got threw out, <laughs> and she stayed the entire show. I was like, she going to get her ass beat. No, should I pay car. my motherfucking money? Mm. I'm staying uh, here. That's probably what happened. Mm. Ain't nobody she probably to paid for the ticket. She paid for the ticket. Politics and comedy. We know politics like happen everywhere, right? Yeah. What's the bullshit that comedians go through with other comedians like when you go to like like I know like I'm in a hip hop realm. A lot of times when I go to the underground shows, it really be a bunch of other hip hop artists watching other hip hop artists perform. Yeah. Do you see that a lot in the comedy world? And what's the politics do you go through? Uh, I'm starting to get out more often and just go to comedy shows, but I don't see a few people at my shows just like always there. But I don't think it's. They still, I think they just on the scene. Because, you know, you can pop up at some shows and just ask the person, like, can I get some time? They'll give you some time. But, like I was, we were talking about earlier when I had opened up for Lavelle Crawford, like, I respect him because, like, he let me be myself. Like, he ain't pulled me to the side and was saying something like, man, don't say the word, bitch. Don't say the word, motherfucker. Don't do this joke. Don't do that joke. He just let me be myself. Mm. And it's a lot of big time comedians. They they do that. They'll tell you like how to do your set so you don't be funnier than them. Uh, do you think that's a, like if you a so head case? Uh, I guess what you say a headliner. Headliner. Are you? Will you be particular about who you open for you? Worried about them being too funny? Will you be calculated like that? Nah, man, I'm out here trying to change the game, and like it's a lot of niggas out here who put together shows, and um, they they always like I be seeing that some of the same people on like different flyers. I'm like, damn, why how they keep getting booked? But it it makes sense because the people who booking them. They be comedians themselves, so they putting them on the show because they know that that person ain't funnier than them. Like, right. niggas scared to put me on their shows. Like I oh, said, damn. when I first started off, I was on every damn them flight. But then people, I started becoming a threat to people. That's why I got on the internet. Wow. I'm like, man, I'm going to just get on the internet, do these skits, and just, like, build my name up from there because, like, niggas be hating out here. Like I told you, the, the comedy game, way more cutthroat than the rap game. They How see a figure? nigga tall, dark, handsome, funny. That shit a threat to people. Oh, shit. And I don't mean to say it like that because, like, females tell me that and other male comedians tell me that. They were like, man, you tall, dark, handsome. Like, <laughs> like for real. Like, for real. Like, <laughs> a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people tell me that. So it makes sense, though. That's why I just keep going, keep God first, and just put out, keep putting out this content. Okay. So, like, Tinker said, like, what, what, what makes it more cutthroat than, than hip hop to you? The fact that, like, boom, say, like, you a post a flight. Like, this one girl, I ain't going to mention no, I ain't going to say no name, but she got me kicked out of competition. <laughs> and wow. she ended up winning the bitch. You feel me? Like, she already know, like, what was going on. And then you got some people, like, you a post a flyer, they'll hit up the promoter, try to get on, try to get you off the show type shit like that. So it's. Real cutthroat. Yeah, man. You know, I do that shit too. If I <laughs> that's art of war. You gotta be willing to go further than what your enemy is willing to but go. But it's to like all the people who hated on me, all the competitions I was in that was rigged against me, like them people ain't doing shit now. That's how karma worked though. Yeah. You know? And I'd be happy. I love I like I love to see. I don't people believe it. You don't believe in karma? Hell no. Nah. So you don't believe karma is one of the laws of the of the world. No. Yeah, karma real. It's very inconsistent. It's like whatever you put out in the universe, that shit gonna come back to you. Exactly. I disagree. Why? I disagree. I feel like karma is very inconsistent. Now, let's not get it twisted. You know what I'm saying? If you keep doing enough stuff wrong, eventually, yes, it can catch up mm -hmm. to you. But it doesn't guarantee that it will. 
I mean, you ain't lived your whole life yet. True. So, like, like say, like, when you get 60, if some shit come to you, and, like, God will put it in your spirit, like, yeah, I did this. Because remember that time you did such and such? Mm -hmm. Like, car it like karma don't come like back. That, really? It don't come back ASAP. I just feel like something, if something, Murphy Law, right? Murphy Law says if something can go wrong, it will. Right. I just feel like at some point in time in life, something wrong is just going to happen. That's just life. I don't think it has nothing to necessarily do with what you've done before. Now, we got certain things that are totally predicated based on, like, if you break the law and the evidence show that you broke the law, then yes, you're going to go to jail. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's karma to me. Yeah, that's not karma. Karma is, I don't believe that if I shit on you when I'm 75 and somebody shit on me, that has something to do with this, um, this issue that happened 60 years ago. I don't think that shit happens like that. I don't think karma works like I don't think karma is real. I understand we want to equate it to something like, oh, this must be an answer because of what I did in the back. But we know that cheaters win. Cause look at most millionaires and that niggas say cheaters win. They do, bro. Like let's just let's not get it twisted. They do. They gain an advantage over people who's willing to play the game fair. They're just playing a higher risk. Yeah. But then their, their demise is always like way more. It don't last than long. I mean, it's high risk versus high reward. Like anything gained fast don't last long. Sometimes it do. And that's what I'm saying. Like, what proof do we have that karma shows that everybody that does something wrong, it catches up to them? It I doesn't mean, always happen. Like I feel that. like it's happening in the background, like in the, in the divine. Because, like, for instance, don't mean to get, like, all technical or whatnot, but, like, when you pray to God, you're like, God, I really want this. Like, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. God ain't going to give it to you when he want to give it to you, but shit adding up in the background. Like, I'm going to see when I'm going to get this to her. Just like shit could be adding up when it comes to bad stuff too. Like, okay, I'm let I'm let you slide on this. I'm let you slide, let you slide. Then boom, it just happened. You know what I mean? I don't That's know. I, I see like people I get killed on the way to Bible study. I guess they didn't did something fucked up a long time ago. That's karma on their ass, huh? Yeah, God, like, don't turn to me now. Like, you too come late. on up here with me, man. Come on up here with me. Take you out. Oh, I mean, I don't know, bro. Like, I don't know. I just don't think karma is that big of a deal. I mean, I do believe necessarily. I guess I'm about to contradict myself. I believe that there are, for every action, there is a reaction. Yeah. There's a consequence or a reward. Mm -hmm. But just to simply say, like, one-offs, because you did one one-off, this is a reaction to it 20 years later, that's your karma catching up. I don't believe in that shit. Just like I don't believe in Zodiac signs. So that's just me. What? You said that last time. How did, I don't see You how believe you in that shit, bro? Like, I believe in, like, the characteristics, but as far as compatibility, you saying, like, oh, TARS ain't, because I'm a TARS. So, like, if I meet somebody, I, like, I oh, we ain't compatible. We ain't compatible. I don't believe in that shit. But as far as how they say, and then when people bring up, like, like I always, because like, I get kind of deep with that shit. Like, when people ask me my sign, and then they be like, oh, we ain't compatible. Like, a Taurus, like, my Taurus, that's just my earth sign. Like, your moon sign is what really yeah. important. My moon sign is a Pisces. Like, that's what's, witchcraft. that's what's that's what's really yeah. important. You the feel power me? of Christ compels you. <laughs> so people who say that, they don't really be knowing what they be talking about. Like you don't even know what the moon sign is. Like the that's moon true. sign is very important. That's the most important but part. But do you of know you. your Japanese sign? Like uh, Chinese animal? sign. It's a. I was born in the year of the rat. I think I was born in. The, <laughs> nah, that's real though. Eighty four. I was born the year of the rat. I don't know what year I was born in. I looked that shit up before. I don't know though. I think I was like a monkey or something. There you go. Lisa, yeah, I got the You see, I go off of numerology. I think numerology is even more accurate than zodiacs and all that shit. Mm -hmm. No. Zodiac is bullshit. And I'm about it to really put this is. to the test. Mario is quiet. He's chill to himself. Take a now guess what sign he is. I'm gonna and you say, better get the shit right. I'm gonna say Mario's a Libra? I'm gonna say he a Tars. What are you? Uh, don't tell me. Hold Pisces. on. Pisces, a real nigga. That's nigga don't know what he is. That that was you. So we just gonna start naming all of them. You <laughs> out of there. You out of there. This the nigga a couch. That what he is. That nigga just chill. Lay I, I, I'm gonna give you another chance. I think you thinking of his Earth sign. So let's look at his <laughs> goddamn Moon sign. Okay. What? My, my last try, Gemini. Okay. Fuck it. I know you Aquarius. <laughs> She didn't name all of them, but, but I didn't, Virgo and Aquarius. I didn't think Aquarius. he was my sign because I'm an Aquarius too. But you know like he's saying? quiet. Are you a February in Aquarius? A February, Aquarius. A January. Yeah. Me too. Hello. See, my ex was an Aquarius. Well, oh, Lord. that's what happened. What happened, bro? Not She's an ex, so did her wrong. Oh, so it's your fault. 
Yeah, and I believe the karma played a big part in that too. Did like, it? I did her wrong. That shit just. I don't even want to talk about it. Is Look, that karma? Or is that just consequences? <laughs> it's karma because like she ain't even she ain't had shit to do with the consequences. Because maybe to me, karma is like, okay, you do somebody... Like, say me and Tinker was in a relationship and I dogged her ass out, right? And then we break up. It don't work. I got my act together. And then now the next girl, I'm doing everything right. Mm-hmm. And she start dogging my that's ass That's karma. Because she ain't got nothing to do with the consequences. Yeah. And that's she me. She ain't know you got nothing to do with That's what I'm saying. To me, that's, right. that, that would equate to possibly karma. Yeah. But if you dogging your girl out and that is the relationship, to me, that's not karma. That's just a consequence. For your action. Yeah, that's the consequence. But when, like you said, when you get in your next relationship, you doing everything right and she dogging you out, that's your karma. But if you never get in another relationship, my nigga, you good. You can never be dogged out because technically yeah, we that, ain't, I think we ain't that's together. Why, that's why mm-hmm. I think that's why I'm saying. No, no, because you're going to you gonna wanna get, you're going to fall in love. I'm sorry to say, but you're going to fall in love again. Later on in life, and the girl gonna fucking do your ass wrong one day. Hey, bro, if you sixty five when that happens, so what? You <laughs> right. Be them, Forty dollars uh, and get you a twenty three year old and get some nails done, and you good. Guess so. Just bounce back. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, man. But that zodiac sign shit is bullshit. Um, in my <laughs> opinion. What about whack one hundred? Right. So let's talk about this. Am okay. I bad? First, Tinker, mm-hmm. I'm let you guide it for a little bit. I'm gonna follow your coattail, and then I come to my okay. my topic. Well, oh, so you don't want to talk about Wack 100 right now? Oh, if you want to, let's go. You, I'll let you pop well, it since, off. Since we already talked about it, I'm gonna be honest. He had me fucking pissed off. First of all, he said that he not a legend. Mm. Then de- then decides to say he ain't got no records. Say who he said wasn't a legend. Oh, sorry. Um, what's his uh, Nipsey Hustle? So how you pissed off? Right. I don't know his yeah, name. remember the nigga's name. You were talking yeah. about Kodak and shit. Had me confused for a second. But Nipsey Hussle, my opinion is he, you don't know the definition of a legend if you say he's not a legend. And like you said, T.I. went online and put the definition of a legend and everybody was like, oh, whatever. But that's true. Like, you can't say nobody a legend based off of how many records they sold. That doesn't make any sense. It goes off of their impact mm. and how they were to the world. That's my opinion. You want to respond to that first, bro? I said what I said. I said like when the game, when they asked game about whack one hundred comments, nah, is he got his own opinion. Then Ti he posted what is a legend. So I was like, nah, y'all call that man out. How y'all did Kodak Black? Okay, I, so now I get what you're saying about the Kodak Black joint. So like y'all got game on went y'all just held yep. that Kodak. Ti made a video yep. calling that man out. But now when the whack one hundred say something about Nipsey Hustle. Oh, I'm going to just make a post. I'm going to screenshot the definition. Then game. Oh, that's his, that's just his opinion. No, nah, call that man how y'all did call that black. Yeah, sure Do that. you think whack statement was just as disrespectful or on the same level as call that blacks? Yeah. I think do. so. Yeah, because it's like, shit, the man dead. You don't have to be talking about if he's a legend or not. Like, let the man rest in peace. I think it's... But you said you said he was talking about that with amongst his homeboys and it got out, so they had to ask him. That's like if it wouldn't have got out, like it still would have just been amongst them. Yeah, because I mean, at the end of the day, let's let's look at it. Both the same thing that happened to Wack One Hundred happened to Kodak Black. These were dudes who went to the internet to pop shit about Nipsey. Mm-hmm. These were two dudes who were having intimate conversations within a circle. Mm-hmm. Somebody secretly recorded uh, Wack One Hundred. And release the audio. Somebody was secretly hip recording Kodak from the black. I mean Kodak from, from the, the black. Bike. <laughs> Kodak, they was secret, secretly uh, recording Kodak Black from the back. You know what I'm saying? And then release the audio. So these ain't both. These aren't two guys who jumped on the internet to go out and disrespect Nipsey and go out their way to disrespect them. This was a conversation amongst their crew, which both had you know which. Within your crew, bro, honestly, it's factual, right? Mm-hmm. Like, well, I ain't going to say factual, but it's understandable why they made those comments amongst their crew. I understand that they was respecting that man's family by not making it public. It was the people who dropped that yeah. shit that disrespected the family because this was never content that was meant to hit. But with WAC 100, let's talk about it a little bit because I kind of understand where he coming from yeah. as far as Nipsey not being a hustle. Whether you agree or disagree, that's a matter of opinion, Right. right. But uh, what was the last uh, album that Nipsey dropped? Um, Marathon. Victory, 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 Victory Lap. Mar- was Victory it Marathon? Lap. Yeah, Victory, Victory Lap. That was out a little bit way before. I don't think he ever had an album called Marathon. Yeah, I think the Victory Lap was, slogan, yeah. this, that joint was out be- way before 
he passed he away. Passed, right. Nobody was claiming he was a legend there. Yeah, and like he whack one hundred said, you went from like one point million followers, you gained like nine to ten million right. followers right. after you died. Yeah, so it's like, I get what Wack is saying. He's saying within the music industry, do you crown Nipsey a legend when he wasn't? He never went on a world tour. He never had a number one single. He, I don't, if I, if I'm, I may be wrong on this, but at the time he's never went platinum. Is in the music game prior to his death was Nipsey a hustle was Nipsey Hustle a legend? Yeah, nah, that nigga was just a really like a to me an upcoming artist. Exactly, he was a strong B. He was a strong B class artist making his way into the A, a stream. Like he it, probably by this time this year, ha, guy if he was able to stay alive and stay. I mean, he's always stayed consistent. His work ethic is crazy. Yeah, he would have definitely had his chance of his run. Mm-hmm. But are we crowning him a legend because of his music? It's okay to crown him a legend for everything that came out that he was doing behind the scenes. Because I'm a, I'm a guy, if you're going to do stuff for the people and you're going to help people, you don't do that stuff in public. Right. You do that stuff in private and you make sure people good. You don't do this to just banner how much you're helping people. Like, I'm not going to, if you need something from me, I'm not going to go on the internet like, yo, this is my man's. <laughs> He about to lose his house. So because I'm his homie, I'm going to give him 2500 to save it. No, my nigga, I'm going to do this shit under the table, behind the scenes. I just thought about it. Like, I think I give him legendary status on one simple fact. It's just like the fact that he brought a whole bunch of gangs that was just beefing for decades. Absolutely. He brought them together. So, so I give him that. So are we agreeing that Nipsey, the man, we, we, we might, I don't know how to say his real name, but him, the person. Nice. Is legendary. Yeah, I, I definitely. But to be called a legend within the music game, nah. I think the man, only that's what Wack was saying. The it's, only person in music that if they die, they'll become a legend because of their music is Snoop Dogg. But he's technically a legend now. He exactly. Died to be a legend. legend. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like he the only nigga to me that'll be like a legend. So uh, why is it okay? Why like why Jay Z too? Oh, yeah. He's a living le- legend. Like that's what I'm saying. Like. Why is it that it takes some people death? Because Wack was saying that about Biggie. Biggie, when he died, he only had one album out. Wow. Can you become a legend off of one album because Ready to Die or Life After Death didn't come you out can. until after he died? Look at, La- look at Lauren Hill. She's a fucking legend. She's but yeah, I give her. But she also had a group with Fuji. True, true. So she don't have just one body of work. Like she shown. Damn, Biggie months. Smalls only had one album? One album. Notorious. Was the Man, only album that, that Life After Death See? came out after he died, and that's what I'm saying. So put him in the same boat as Nipsey. One album, Nipsey had like probably two albums, I think. So why I think we- they say Biggie was a legend because of the whole Tupac beef, and the beef. they think like Tupac has something to do with that shit. Whoop the whoop. So it was like a legendary beef. Now Tupac, you could say a living legend. He had multiple albums. You think he's still living? <laughs> you said nah, living legend, I think he so. did. I think, I think that nigga alive, man. I think he alive too. No lie. Why? Why do y'all think he alive? I think he's dead. I don't know, man. It's just he was just so smart. Like I think he, he was, was smart so enough smart. to get away from the world. Like that's what you had to do. You gotta think about it. Tupac's a Gemini. Let's go back to Zodiac. Okay. He's fucking smart as shit. He's very calculated in everything that he does. Mm. You gotta go back to his work. Think about Machiavelli and the okay. whole situation with that. Somebody who actually faked their death. Mm. And all of a sudden, this nigga died. Nobody, look, they ain't got pictures of the funeral. We don't know shit. We ain't seen no nothing from the situation. We ain't seen none of that shit. So if you that big of a person, we going to see something. We going to see a funeral. We going to see some type of shit. I think, yeah, I think he's dead. After listening to um, Keefe D, no, um, Keefe D was Southside Crip. Um, you know, when that whole, that whole beef was happening, you had, you know, Ma Paru, that's who Death Row was ro- rolling with. And then Diddy, you know, when he was beefing with um, Death Row, they solicited Southside Crips. That's Keefe D, you know. Keefe D already came out and stated what happened at night because they the ones, it was his nephew, the one that ended up shooting and killing Tupac. They said it was a, a Muslim nigga. That's who killed Biggie. That was the dude with the bow tie that pulled up on the side of the car on Biggie. Oh. But everybody knew who killed Pac in the hood. Because what it was is that um, the nigga that they jumped in the casino. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a nigga named what is it, uh-huh. Orlando? Orlando yeah. Johnson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's Keefe D nephew. 
Orlando Johnson knew, like, he's like, it's one thing to get my ass whooped by a bunch of mob pyro and a bunch of blood niggas, and I can go back to the hood, but you think I can go back to the hood and say I got my ass whooped by a rapper? You know what I'm saying? So they, Tupac popped it off on Orlando Anderson in the casino. After that shit popped off, he went and got Keefe D now. They riding around in a white Cadillac. They say they knew that Pac them was on their way to Suge Club, so they went to the club first, waiting for them to get to the club. They waited 40 minutes. It took too long for them to get there because mm-hmm. Keefe was like, him and Suge had did business together before, so he was like, really? We was like, yo, let them niggas squap it out one-on-one. Mm-hmm. Or let me, you know, we could chop it up with Shug. But when they didn't make it to the club, they left the club. As they leaving the club and they riding down the street, they start hearing the girls say, them girls in the car start saying, Tupac, Tupac, Tupac. And that's when they saw Tupac and Shug in the bins. That's when they turned the car around mm-hmm. and uh, Orlando um, Johnson or Andrew, Orlando Johnson, whatever his name is, he shot up Pop and Shug. Keefe D even said, they like, nigga, if, if Pac was on my side, I would have shot his ass. But how, if nobody in the car get hit but you, though? Who? Did, did it was, other people get hit in the car with Pac? No, it was Suge and Shug. Pac, the only two in the car. But Suge got shot get, in the head. Oh, he got shot. Okay, I didn't yeah. know that. Okay, Suge got shot in the head. Pac got shot up. Because, you know, Pac didn't die until a couple of days later hmm. in the hospital. So what happened was um, 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 Mob James and them start chasing... Uh, 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 Orlando and them in the white Cadillac and them niggas got away. Reason why Keefe D came out with the story is everybody in the car is dead that was in that car that night that Pop got killed. Mm-hmm. Everybody that was in the car with him was dead. He was the only one that's alive. He got that, He got jammed up in an indictment and they wanted to close the case. And it was like, yo, you tell us the story of what's going on, what happened that night with Pop and not only you will get off but all of the whoever else was there uh, um, his co-defendants in that case would get off. So he told the story. These niggas been dead for a couple of years. Everybody in the car, Orlando Anderson, Keefe D tells the story of what happened that night, kind of the story I just told you. So that Pac conspiracy of him still being alive, he ain't alive, bro. That dude did. I don't think Pac wasn't the type to hide. He was just too militant. His character doesn't say that he will go into hiding. But if you fake your death, you know you get in big trouble for that shit. So maybe he like, fuck, I faked it and I don't want to get in trouble now, so I'm just going to like... But who are you faking it from? Like... like My nigga, the CIA, the feds? Yeah. FBI? Like, you go to... to I'm quite sure, bro. You not... If you on a list already, you're not hiding from them. It's too late. Yeah, they They're wanna, watching they you everywhere. They want to find you. They can. I just one thing I can't say. If they want to find you. They gonna find your ass. The only way you are gonna hide from them niggas is to hide before they even get on their radar. Once you're on their radar, they've been watching you and filming you and recording you for a long time. I guess it's one of those things we just never know. Oh, that yeah. nigga dead as hell. Never know. Or maybe he paying them off because he got money. You think he got that money to pay the government? Though? That Roy, much money. Roy, he didn't Roy really die with that shit. much money. Man, he don't own his music. Yeah, that nigga know. probably doing shows in, uh, Mar- on Mars and shit. <laughs> He's an alien. Y'all see that Tupac hologram, though? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Coachella that one time? That shit was whack to me. You think so? Why? It was just like, if I was there, I was like, man, I would have been like, get this fake shit up out of here. Man. <laughs> Boo. Like, this stupid as fuck. <laughs> oh, man. So, I know we always talk about the top hip-hop list. We was trying to talk, to, talk about this off camera, but I want to hear your top comedian list. Mike Epps. Lil Duval and them top two because they had like personal effects on me in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, number three, I had to go with D. Ray Davis. Number four, I had to go with um, Red Fox. Okay. And then number five, the um the nigga from Bay Bay's kid. What the name is? Uh, uh, um 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 um. Man, what that nigga uh, name uh, uh, is? Uh, 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 it's gonna come to me. Man, what that nigga name it's is. It's going to come to me. Um, what, shit. Who, whatever his name, him. Do my top five. No, Eddie Murphy? Damn, I can't think of his name. Now I get Eddie here, Murphy an honorable mention. Number six. Robin Harris. Robin Harris, yeah. I that nigga, he, 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 he number five for me. Is he the dad from um, from House Party too? Is that him? Yep. Yeah, yep. that's him. That yeah, nigga stand funny. up funny. Like, like I judge people by their stand up. Okay. Like not what they did in movies or how funny. I watch their stand up. I like, yeah, that nigga funny. So you're, you're, you're wait, number one was who? Mike Epps, Lil Duval. You get Mike Epps number one out okay. of okay. I ain't gonna respect I respect that. Me too. Yeah, Mike Epps, Lil Duval, D. Ray agree, Davis, but... Red Fox, and Robin Harris. 
My top five. I definitely agree with your top one. But you found little doof. I don't top, find you doof top thing. Mike Epps is you number one. That what I'm saying. Have you seen his stand up? Okay, that's probably why I've never. I seen know, yeah, you got to watch these niggas stand up. I'm not funny, agreeing bro. with with the Mike Epps. Why not? Number one. That nigga. See, he, Mike Epps silly. number one to me because he he don't try to be funny. The nigga just funny. Yeah. To like me, you got people who write jokes and go out there and then try to make the shit funny. Like like he like I I emulate my style room because I just think about my life experiences. I just go out there and talk about it, but I don't just talk about it. I write my shit out first, like to structure it. And you feel me? I go from there. I just feel like he's silly. His stand up wasn't like I would put definitely Cat Williams. Yeah, I was gonna say Cat Williams. That nigga wet. I don't like I ain't gonna say he wet. His voice just annoying. I don't like that. <laughs> I, I don't like me. comedians that get on stage be doing a lot of screaming. I don't like comedians that always laugh at their own jokes, jokes try yeah. to get other people to laugh. That like, me too. So Dave Chappelle does that a lot? Nah, Dave Chappelle, he kind of like laid back and fluid with him. But he'll do a laugh and he'll drop his hand and slap yeah, his he leg. Will. He he do but, that shit. Nah, you can do that if you know that shit was funny. Mm-hmm. Like he he don't do it just to be doing it, try to get the people to laugh. Like he do that shit because he really think that we, shit. Funny. Yeah, that shit was funny to me. So shit. he's my number one. Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. Yes, he's fucking funny. Number one stand up. And for a long time, I, I agree with Faison when he said like Dave Chappelle was for white people. Prior to the Chappelle show, I never checked in for Dave Chappelle. After the Chappelle show. I still never really checked in for Dave Chappelle stand up until recently. That nigga funny, bro. He funny as hell. It's funny as so hell. So now, but prior, I would agree. Like when Faison was saying, like Dave Chappelle was like more so for the white people, mm-hmm. and maybe black people. We just we finally caught up on his humor with the Chappelle show. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but top five, okay. Let me think mine. I get Chappelle number one. Number two. I'm going to go Martin Lawrence. Oh, shit. I forgot about Martin's. Yeah. Number three. I try to think of people like whose specials like impacted me in some type of way. I'm going to go Cat Williams. (laughs) Number four. I'm going to go Eddie Murphy. Number five. I'm going to throw y'all off on this one, but his comedy special had me dying. Jamie Foxx. Oh, I, damn, I, I forgot about, about that Jamie nigga. Fox. Jamie Foxx go hard He's with the stand-up. Hilarious. Yeah. That was my, that was, Jamie Foxx go hard, bro. Mm-hmm. That nigga, I forgot about him. I switch him out for Robin Harris. Because Jamie Foxx, bro, he, that nigga is off the chain. That nigga funny, bro. Who, who you got, Tinker? I, you know what? I like Chris Tucker. I'm going to make him my number four. Cause I okay. love Chris Tucker. I'm, you know, it's like it's kind of like how you start stand up a movie. Wait, how, how do you start okay. with number four? I know, I know. Who is it's like, like out of five, <laughs> but who places somebody at number that's, four I'm first? Weird. That's, some, that's some Aquarius shit. Okay. I'm weird. I just got to put it like that. Like number four is Chris Tucker. Number five, I'm gonna say is um, Cat Williams. Okay. I love Cat Williams. Number one is Dave Chappelle. Number okay. two. Mm, I don't know. I don't fucking know. Number two. I'm gonna but have to you go got with, a number four. Yeah. And yeah. a five. <laughs> and yeah. a five. But you can't figure out exactly. two, two, two and three. three. Yeah. Num- I'm going to come back to me on number two and three. I'm very indecisive. I'm, I'm trying to put a woman in there because I know women are hilarious too. Now I don't want to leave, no, leave a woman Are we going to just try to force them in there? You can't Adele just be forcing them. Funny. Adele, yeah, Adele Givens is funny. Lunell, she funny. Oh, Lunell. Okay, that's my number two right there. No, she's my number three. She's my number three because she's funny. Um... I'm trying to think of Tiffany Haddish because Tiffany Haddish is funny to me sometimes, but sometimes she do too fucking much. Like I feel like she's the female version of Mike Epps. Really? Hell no. Nah. Yep. Nah. I feel like they both get real silly. To me, it's just like either it's hilarious or... The... Yeah. I know Mike Epps is always hilarious to me, but sometimes Tiffany, I'd be like, girl, you tried it. Mm. But she's funny too. Notice none of us said Kevin Hart. Yeah, I think he just he try to be funny. Yeah, he does. I think he's funny. I just don't think he's top five. I I definitely put him probably top fifteen. I ain't him. He ain't, nah. He ain't even in that. I me. think Kevin Hart is one of those ones now that he's so corporate, he's so big that people people don't like when people just get too mm-hmm. commercial. Yeah, because I'm like I like Kevin Hart. I like the paper soldiers, Kevin Hart. 
Because I hope you get you that commercial that where we can sit here and start talking about like, man, I, I like when that nigga was that's, broke and then half shit. That's that the nigga thing. Was on that that's real the thing. Comedy. I ain't going to never go that. I, I'm staying true to myself. Like, I had one comic come up to me. Like, I killed the stage at the Addison Emperor. I killed it. Because, you know, like Addison Emperor, it was like a lot of white people in there. Yeah. But they love to hear our story. So he felt like because he was on Hollywood, he was on the Kevin Hart show, he going to come up to me like, yeah, man, um... The nigga word, you know, you might not want to be saying that. Like, and I only said nigga like twice. And I'm like, nigga, I just killed this crowd. Nigga, you just hating. Nigga. I would like, get your nigga, bitch ass nigga, out of my nigga, face. Nigga. Everybody say nigga. Like, you yeah, I'm like, don't white people love that. They <laughs> white want... people be calling each other niggas behind <laughs> exactly. the I got a white, I got Hell a vi- yeah. I got a video right now in my white home, boy. All this, and we just talking. He was like, man, that nigga go hard. Like, that's how he talk. Like, shit, like them white people love to hear us tell our story. You just yeah. hating. You don't went got it on Hollywood, got on Kevin Hart TV show, and now you don't let these white people get to you. Mm. Like he, I ain't, they ain't getting to me. I'm mm-hmm. gonna continue to tell my story and be true to myself. What y'all think about JB Smooth? Horrible, fucking horrible. Um, <laughs> he, stand him. he all right. He all right. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, why, mouth be sounding wet as hell. He just sound like he's yeah. <laughs> all the mouth sweat. <laughs> yeah, he's all right. And he's just say stupid shit. I'll be like, and he be trying, like, he's like another Kevin Hart to me. Like, he tried too hard to be funny, then it's not funny no more. Yeah. I, I don't know how he, they really pushed him on that reality, fake reality show with Kevin Hart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Housewives. Husbands, Real husband, out, husband, 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 husband. Hollywood or whatever. Quick question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch the subject. What you think about the fan only pages that chicks are doing on social media where they selling videos and only fans? Only fan yeah. pages. You seen those joints? They selling pussy. That's what it is. All these hoes selling. I be hating like when I see females like they be having like one point something, two point something million followers, and then you see what they do, it just say brand ambassador. Like, bitch, <laughs> like what is you? <laughs> <laughs> Brand ambassador is yeah. cold for selling pussy. Yeah, yeah, like bitch, you ain't ambassador in nothing. And do, but do you think it's? First of all, let's just talk about it. Is you think that's cool? Should prostitution be legal? Do y'all think it's legal in Vegas? Should it be federally legal, like weed? Yeah, like it, like it should. should that be like the two top things on ballots, like weed and prostitution? I See, think a lot of bitches be getting robbed for their pussy. You feel like, like <laughs> if you was to put a price on the pussy, how how much should a, a chick put a price on? Don't ask me, because I'm going to say a couple much? million. Hell no. Nah. To fuck nah. for one night, million. Hell no. Nah. I think for on one are. night, I think they should have started off at 200. Two, I agree. What? I agree. That's, That's reasonable. Just, I'm just going, I ain't paying though. I'm fucking, I'm... Out of yeah, out of there. But you're not paying. So you just like, oh, how much is 200? You get in and you out like, uh. But I mean, you know they gonna want their money first. Yeah, they gonna want their money first. <laughs> I feel like if you not if you not the best looking chick in the world and you gotta sell pussy two hundred dollars, cool. Hell no. Nah. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta have pussy is powerful. A dude gotta I pay two hundred dollars for an ugly face. I was yeah. pimping, so I know how the shit go. Oh, so you had that ism. I was back page pimping before. Okay. I was the <laughs> nah for real. I was the the pimp the. The driver and the babysitter. Like I had to watch her son while she go up there and do her thing and shit. Shit like that. I tried. And it was my girl too. And I was like, I fell in love with my hoe because I was like, damn, she really out here doing this for me? And it was, (laughs) nah, for for real. It's like, we was down bad. And how it all started, my homegirl, she had some hoes. Mm. You feel me? So it was like, man, damn, like I had hit her up. I was like, man, let me be your driver, son, because I needed some money. And then she actually threw me in the game. She was like, nah, matter of fact, I got something. I'm going to give you one of my hoes because I'm tired of this bitch anyway. So then my girl, she heard the shit. She was like, I'll do it too. Then I looked down like, for real? And then next thing you know, like, we met up. She gave me her hoe. And I had two of them, but I ended up with just my girl. We ditched that hoe because she was just trying to, you know, finesse us out of the money and shit like that. But with my girl, when I was doing it, like, I had to make sure, like, I'm fucking you first every morning. Because you, <laughs> cause you know they say you supposed to just fuck your hoe one time and then just let them do that. Like, nah, I got to fuck first every morning. Every morning. Every, I don't give a fuck who you been fucking. Like, nigga, you still my girl type shit. You feel me? Like, 
That shit, so was, what, that so shit was real, man. What's the purpose of y'all then? If you, I'm doing all the work and I'm getting the money. Like, Security. That pimp shit daily. Like, okay. nigga, boy, nigga, try to rob your ass, beat your whole And matter of fact, what made my bitch stop doing it, a nigga tried to, like, rape her in the alley. And then mm. she ran back to the yeah, car. Yeah, out of the track. She was walking the track. Nah, we had went oh, for- Oh, you said back page, though. So. We went for an out call, you feel me? I got you. So like the niggas like come back to the back and type shit. I live in the back, but really it was just when she got back there, like nigga tried to rape her, and like I heard her screaming. I'm like, man, I hope she make it back. Cause <laughs> I, I swear I was like, she came back and she wanted me to go do something. I just drove. I'm like, man, we ain't fucking with the people, man. This shit is serious. God. Then she moved. Yeah. She after that she moved back to Monroe. I was like, damn, like, fuck that. Just, See, she all you want to do is spend the money and. I remember one time she had an in call. Nigga pulled up. Nigga was like, the nigga was bragging. Nigga was bragging like, yeah, I be selling the phones and shit. So he pulled up to the room. We was in the Super 8 in Irving. She, he pulled up to the room and I broke in his car and like stole his backpack full of phones. And then the same girl who put me in the game, like she know all the plugs. So I called her up and I showed her the phone. It was just a whole bunch of fake iPhones. Oh, wow. damn. I was like, this nigga here broke his fuck. Cap was hell, yeah. huh? Yeah. <laughs> I stole them hoes. Oh, you out here pimping for? You was out here pimping for real. Yeah, I was in that shit for out real. The super, uh, you said at the super eight. We was everywhere. Like we sometimes, like <laughs> sometimes, like my mom ain't know what was going on. All she knew, like I just kept bringing this girl to the house, like a few days, a few nights, you know, and shit like that. But when we make some money, like we'll go back out and get us a room type shit. You feel me? But I just kept fucking up the money. So Tinker, mm-hmm. two hundred dollars a day. Two hundred dollars ain't enough. No, hell no. Why? Do you know what happens when you fuck somebody? Your your coochie is loose for like at least a couple, like hell no. like a day or two. You gotta wait to have sex with somebody else. I'm only making two hundred dollars every couple days. Hell no. Hell First of no. all, I just seen birth given, and you didn't gave birth. If a baby can stretch that thing out and then stretch back, ain't no penis in the world Look, blowing that shit out like a baby. Yeah. I had sex with my boyfriend like three times in one day. And I swear, I was like, my, my vagina is sore as shit. Imagine having sex with three random people, like, in the day, and you got to do it again the next day. Um, but like, I'm quite no. sure most of them dudes probably ain't going for the gusto yeah, or 15, they ain't, look, minutes. And most of them dudes be having fetishes. Like, my whole life, she, she had met this one guy. He just wanted her to be his meat with her feet. Like, niggas is weird as fuck. That, like, cool. motherfuckers got fetishes and shit like that. I was like, Really? So, Some people want you to spit on them. Yeah, like people just want you to shits. come over and talk to them and yeah. just, you don't have to, like she want fucking every client and shit like that. People just had weird little vibes and shit. So $200. Mm-mm. I can get $200 just for asking people randomly. Can I get $100? Can I get $100? Hey, that's nothing. Hell no. Nah. Like, do I guess this, if you if, if a dude pay for sex, is he obligated to get your orgasm? And if he does give mm-hmm. your orgasm, does he entitled to get? Nah, keep his he money? obligated to get his nut if he paying. Right. That's what he paying for. I agree. But if the girl has an orgasm, does he have a right to keep his money? Because now you both benefited. Nah, he who said I wanted pay. that nasty ass orgasm? Just because I nutted, I mean, I I liked it. That doesn't even make sense. Yeah, that does. I don't understand that concept. Yeah, that don't make sense. That does make sense. How do you nut and not like it? How do you you don't have to like them? You don't have to enjoy it. You don't have to enjoy the experience. No, I feel like it. that should be like customer service policy. Is that I could if a dude comes in and he pays you for sex, it should all be about him. He ain't gotta worry about you get shit. He can go as hard as he want, as fast as he want. But if you mess around and your legs start locking up and you shake you nut, hey, it's even. You got one and I got one. And we, but the agreement was you was going to pay me. Until you nut it. And then you fuck <laughs> it. <laughs> no. Yeah, was, you you enjoy it. Nah, I'm you not paying it. for you until you <laughs> for you to enjoy yourself. Yeah. This so just me. so just nut and say you didn't nut, ladies, if that's the case. Just yeah. hold it in. I yeah. mean, y'all good at faking anyway, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, but have you ever faked on a girl before? Uh, Fake nutted. I have. I have too. Yeah, I definitely have. What? Wait. Hell you yeah. Can do that? Yeah. Can do that? Hell yeah. It, and I can like I can fuck a girl and don't even nut just because I'm yep. tired. I'm like man, fuck this whole like Damn this whole want to keep pussy, this whole want to yep, keep going. Yeah, that's what it that's is. Like, what this is, whole want to keep going. I'm gonna just act like I nutted just so we can say we done. No Start jizz. From, no nothing. Like no nothing. Nah. Wow. So now, girls, 
we'll have the tables turn because y'all thought y'all was the only ones out here faking like girl nigga I faked on that nigga <laughs> yeah, oh I'd yeah be niggas faking. we be out here with the uh 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 oh yeah, yeah that was woo so y'all don't know when a girl faking y'all can't tell when a girl we don't faking? really care because we trying to get ours facts I mean that's fucking around with some random but I'm talking about your girl like you, you don't know with when that, a girl we don't care <laughs> with the girl, damn. Like, <laughs> we don't give a damn like we just trying to get ours well I mean my personal experience, I feel like it's better when we both are pleasured. It's I, better when we both feeling good. It is. That's safe. But every girl think they good at sex. Exactly. That's true. And you know why? Bitch be riding. You're like, oh, you feel that? They you be scooting that? back and forth. Like, like little Duval say, like, bitch, you ain't doing nothing but moving the shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> like, that shit was funny. Way. That's his stand up. Like, you got to check that nigga out. you like, oh, you feel that? You feel that? He said, bitch, you ain't doing nothing but moving your shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's real. They got a like, trick for that. They say you got to spell out the word something like when you're riding the dude to make it feel good. I, I guess. It's like you got to spell know, out like know. good or cookie or some shit like that. But I feel like this, right? I think most women walk around. Cookie. <laughs> <laughs> cookie. Man, I bet that better not happen to me. I bet I sit there and start filling the letters. That's yeah. going to be some bullshit. <laughs> you like. But I, I tell you a fail though, right? And I probably shouldn't. I'm probably getting in trouble like a bitch at home. But fuck it. Um, so I, I was reading this book. I uh, know I was reading this um, article. You know, I'm trying to make my sex game better. You know, so I'm critiquing myself. Like, you know, I don't want to get complacent, thinking I'm out here just doing the shit. So then I was reading some article, and it gave you like a rhythm, like two long strokes, two <laughs> three deep strokes, then two long strokes. Then I two, do three. that. And, and so I was doing that shit. And I'm thinking like, yeah, one and two and one, two, three. <laughs> one and two and one, Got two, to. three. Man, my wife stopped and looked at me like, the hell is you doing? I was like, you liking that shit? She said, hell no. At least like, she told nigga, you. no. Like, no. Like, whatever you used to do, keep that shit. But that shit you doing? No. Nah. But I think women, y'all have the luxury, right, of telling a nigga he whack at sex. Because y'all know y'all can have sex whenever y'all want to. You can be the ugliest chick in the world, and Pussy. you can have a nigga pull up. Really? Pussy as hell, man. Hell yeah. You can be the finest nigga in the world, and you still got to wait for the ugliest girl in the world to say yes. Yep. So, That's why uh, I said, boy, I wish I had a pussy, boy, because I'd be, <laughs> I'd be rich. <laughs> but I was, boy, That's like, what you're saying until you got one, and people judge you for, I don't for give fucking a fuck. for money. Hey, this 2019. Would. You wouldn't fuck for money. Me? Yeah. It, it would have to be a lot of money. So you would. Okay, yeah. Anybody who says that they wouldn't is lying. Because what's a lot to you may be less to somebody else, and then they be judging your ass. Like, ah. I have when bitches be like, I would never do that. That's so, like, bitch, yes, you would. What's a lot of money? If somebody said, I give you a million dollars to fuck me right well, now. But what makes you think you got a million dollar pussy? What make, what make you think you can fuck me for free or for nothing? I might not I say, put a we price. We just said $200. If I put a price on it and you don't want to pay for it, that's on you. But man. we just said, we didn't say man, for free. All I know is if a girl got. If, like say like a girl behind on her rent, she need like two hundred dollars. She gonna fuck for that. Facts. Just That's real. to pay that rent to get to keep that roof over your head. You know, I don't give a fuck if you were behind thirty or forty dollars. Like to Start. make sure you ain't getting them late fees. You finna no. fuck for that. No. Yeah. Oh yeah. You no. not about to sit there and lose yeah, and keep, rack up those fees. Yeah. Keep laying the eight fuck late fees here, add up. I'm not fucking nobody for no forty dollars. Yeah, you get out of here because that forty dollars is like a million. You ain't right got. Now. You ain't got to say like fuck for forty dollars, but like if you you like if you if you behind forty dollars, you gonna tell you gonna fuck a nigga and then you gonna finesse the forty dollars. You ain't gonna say like I just want to fuck you for forty dollars. You gonna be like oh can I have forty dollars sure. fifty dollars real quick? Sure. You know I'm trying to get this done. You ain't gonna tell him what it's for. But, no. but your whole intent, your whole motive was, yeah, I fucked this nigga, so like I'm finna get this money up out of him. I need this. I think two hundred dollars is a good number. Yeah, no, two hundred is good. Not. That's a good start. A million dollars is some bullshit. I mean, okay, realistically, like fifty k. Get the fuck out of here, take it. Absolutely. You how sound like a brand ambassador now. Yeah, like, yeah. shit. I wish I was fifty k. How do you? Yes. How do you come up with that number? Look, first of all, I'm not, I'm not gonna be fucking. If if we fucking for money, I'm not fucking anybody. If you if there's money involved, you're right. not gonna be no random ass regular ass nigga. Because I'm trying to get the money, I'm going for the big. Well, so you want people. a boyfriend that got that type of money? No, it don't gotta be my boyfriend. Mm -mm. If you want to have sex with me, if somebody hit me up in my DM right now and said we finna have sex, and it's somebody like Diddy 
or like fucking Jay Z or some shit like that, you gonna pay me? Hell no, they you gonna, gonna pay it up me? Off Look, the cloud. they gonna say, "Bitch, get the fuck out of here," and I'm gonna say, "Nigga, go on to the next bitch," because nah, no, them niggas ain't dropping. Them you niggas getting do. They bitches, buying Birkin bags for bitches that I cost think $50, bitches paying them the fuck. I believe it. They buying bitches bags that cost thirty thousand dollars. Okay, that's a bag, and they probably got an endorsement somewhere, and they pulled the yeah, bag out for free. free. Yeah. No, like Future said, he he. Cash out all his bitches. Anybody that's his bitch, he gonna get them whatever they want. That, that's easier than getting them stuff because I'm quite sure he got endorsements and he got connections to all that shit. Mm-hmm. That's why he not giving them the money. But who's to say he's not giving them the money? I'm just saying. It just makes more sense. Um, you know so why so rappers you always talking dollars? about gifts and shit? What they buying bitches? I'm a guy. I be trying to fuck for free all the time. But would you fuck for 200 If somebody was like, I'll give you... you had, Somebody had to pay you. You would rather them give you $200 or fuck for free. I'm just a guy that I'm just flattered that you even offering me. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> like, God damn, how much? 10? You going to give me shit? Yeah. I don't know. Because just... a chick pulled me on Thanksgiving. Like, <laughs> nah, she did. Like, because I had made a post. I was like, man, I ain't got nobody. I was sad. I'm like, I ain't got nobody. Here. No family. My mom live in Georgia. I'm just out here by myself. Then she left a comment. She was like, let's go to the movies and see Queen and Slim. She took me to the movies. Fuck so that's me. That's you went with. Yeah, she <laughs> fucked me and she yeah, she be so giving me some money. There you go. That was the first time y'all met. Yep, and I was like, see, I like that. Like you, you grown, know. I'm grown. Like fuck all that. Like I ain't. She gonna, older. We the same age, thirty one. Okay, okay. And we like she. We both on some grown shit. Like we we like each other. We both attracted to each other. We finna fuck all that. Nah, I don't want to feel like a hoe. And like man, I like grown women. Like, oh, see, I, that's a different story. I don't I don't agree with if you. I feel like if you like somebody, y'all want to fuck y'all fuck. You ain't gotta wait for no yeah. months, a week, or a day. If you feel like you want to have sex with them, yeah, cause she pulled me. I'm like, okay. Shit. But you don't agree with paying or or selling. I just it's the whole it's the whole thought of I'm selling myself to you is just fucks me up. Why? It makes me want to put a, a higher price on it. If you saying like, you about to pay for it, it just makes me not like it. Well, well, I mean, I'm just saying, put the higher price. Can they do an installment plan? <laughs> right. No, I need have my shit up front. Would you go to the drug dealer and say I'm they be front shit you? all the time? Yeah, drug niggas is the niggas that front the most. You can't front no pussy. You can. You either gonna get it or you're not gonna get it. You can. You gotta call like a collection agency. Like, hello, this is Tinka. Uh, I'm calling Mr. Johnsonville because he's past due on his pussy payment. I mean, I feel like you should help a girl if they need help. If you wanna if you want to win points, you should help her anyway. Who gives a fuck about points, Tinka? I mean if What you just, points are we getting? I mean, if you just wanna fuck and you just wanna get a nut. That's one thing. But if you want to impress somebody, trying to give them money or fucking for money, I feel like you should just do it out the kindness of your heart. If you want her to be good, you want her to be good, you want her to be without the rent paid. She shouldn't have to fuck you to pay her rent. So you got to let her, if, if you let her suffer long enough, then her prices come down. She going to go to the next nigga is what she going to do. She going to be like, well, fuck she, this nigga. He ain't talking about shit. I'm obviously, she wasn't because her rent wouldn't get paid. Maybe you was nigga number one and she got to go to nigga number two, three, four, five. I'm glad you said that. So speaking of lists... This is my theory, and maybe I'm wrong, and this maybe this is how I operate as a guy. But since as a guy, I don't have the luxury of telling a girl she trash at sex because I don't determine when sex go down. I just I used to create a list, like I had my number, to my top ten who I call and hope that answer the phone and let me slide through, mm-hmm. and now I just work down that list. So if the number one wow. person that texts, they be like, yo, what's up? You know, you what you got going on tonight? Or what y'all say that what you doing text? She on some bullshit? Like, nah, nigga, I go to number two, the number three, number four. If you was to guess what number on the list you are on most dude, well, this is not going to work for you, Tinker, because wow. you married. I'm not fucking married, Okay, first of all. <laughs> all right, whatever. So I think every girl should sit here and evaluate what list they on when a dude hit them up. Because you may not, as much as you be like, oh, this nigga always hit me up, you probably number 18, and he's hoping that you answer this call. I don't know I'm number one, so, yeah, maybe How do you should know ask that? somebody else. How do you know? I know for, if, look, the niggas you know, that y'all I- y'all light-skinned girls be lazy as hell. If I was to be fucking with the niggas, which I'm not, I would say I'm number one on the, the niggas that I'm fucking with. Listen, I don't know, if they I ain't, you don't need to talk to me then. They say light-skinned girls be lazy as hell, y'all just be thinking y'all cuteness is enough. Light-skinned girls think they a whole different race, like- that's some what light, I like. Some I like girls, dark skin bitches. Some light skin girls, but some light skin girls are like me. I'm one of a kind. Like I have my own mind, my own like you know. I'm a weirdo. I like aliens yeah. and I like weird shit. Uh, you, you can decline, I, I that, bro. 
Yeah. It's all good. That's it. Let it ring. This is a podcast. This ain't like a syndicated TV show. Yeah. But go ahead. What'd you say a ticket? So you like aliens and shit? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a different type of breed. Like, I, a lot of niggas tell me, like, I thought you was going to be like this and when I met you and now... A lot like, of niggas. Yeah, a lot of niggas tell me that. How many is a, a lot? lot of niggas? I mean, a lot of niggas tell me that. Like, pretty much every nigga that I come into encounter with, they tell me, I thought you was going to be a bitch. I thought you was going to be mean, but you real cool and you weird. I'm yeah, but, a weirdo. But we, that, ain't, that don't negate the fact that you're not like saying that be sex. game. Like, I don't tell a lot of bitches that. Yeah, I just to make to. it seem no, like you know. You fell for it too, Taker. I know for, for a fact. No, I know for a fact I'm a weirdo. <laughs> like I will be chilling with somebody and I'll be like, "Ooh, the girl, alien spaceship," like or some shit like that, or some weird ass shit. Like, what do you think about death or some shit? Like, you I'm watch anime? Bitch. Anime, as in like what love got to do with it? Nah, just what they call that shit, anime. <laughs> yeah, that Dragon Ball Z shit. Whatever it's called, you watch that. Mm. Uh, nah. Then you ain't weird then. Any what, bitch that I watch Dragon that Ball Z. Yeah. Nah, I watch Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, I don't watch none of that. Like we had That's a guy. That's weird. We had a guy last week who was what was his he was like an alien yeah, expert, UFO, yeah, UFO, UFO expert. journalist. And I felt right at home. I was like, fuck yeah, I wanna know all this shit. Like I wasn't even talking because I was too busy listening, like trying to figure out some shit. You still ain't negate the fact or uh, combat the fact that you light skinned and y'all be lazy as hell at sex. Y'all My think y'all just be No. Why do you keep this is not Toward light skinned people, I think it's just w- different women like to be pleased versus pleasing. But it's more likely, it's more likely that light skin. Like, that's what they say. I'm not saying it's true or not. I think it's true. Light yeah. skin, y'all just be like, oh, I'm beautiful, I'm pretty, I can just lay here and. Yeah, that's, I think that's true. That's your style, though. That's not my style. No, that's good. You, Absolutely not. You dark skin at heart. I'm with Dirk. I'm light skin, but I'm still a dark nigga. <laughs> 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 I'm like I'm dark on the inside, I guess. So what y'all think? Um, shit. Oh, oh, that shit wasn't even on. What? The, um, oh, the what's the day? Hey, shit, you can still turn it on now. They just have to tune in for the rest of the part. Yeah. There you go. I don't know, man. Like, so what's the, um, what was the other topic? So we had, we already hit the, um, we hit the WAC 100. Mm-hmm. We hit pay, on, oh, so we never still touched on pay only. So we talked about, Selling it like y'all think that's a, a cool come up? Is it embarrassing? Y'all think that's a cool hustle for chicks? I think it's your business. You want to sell it, sell it. But mm, you you to start you a pay uh, a fan only page? No, I wouldn't do it. Why not? I wouldn't do it, but um, I feel like if if you want to do that to make your money, I, you, nobody's touching you. No, you're not like having sex with anybody. You're just on camera. So why won't you do it yourself? Uh, I'm not saying that I wouldn't do it. Just not if, if I'm in the point in my life where I'm comfortable, I don't have to do that. But if I had to, hell yeah, I would. I'm about to start my own fan only page. You should. What are you gonna name it? D Big D only. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna call it Heaven on Earth. Heaven on Earth. Yeah. I'm gonna, say, I'm gonna sit and eat marshmallows and shit. <laughs> some fat nigga shit. I mean, nobody's touching you. You're just sitting in front of the camera, so I don't see why it's a problem. Women need to bring back the '90s style mm. Afro coochie. You like, like that bushy not, shit? No shave November? Yeah, I like that. I don't, that like, I don't like a bald pussy. That what? shit is stupid to me. Oh I like God. hair on my shit. I can't. So you you can eat a girl out with hair on it? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, that's safe. I like that. Ugh. Like on Dolomite High, she ripped that shit off. She... <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. That's how a nigga like that shit. I like my shit like that. Why, though? I don't know. It's just like growing up, like my mom... Like used to have her friends come over to, before they used to go to the club. You know how women get dressed in front of each yeah. other and shit. I used to see that shit like, and I used to think <laughs> that's how that, that, that shit. I think that's I used to always think that's how that shit supposed to look like that. And growing up in middle school, you know, like nigga be seeing like looking between girls' legs and they have on skirts. You be like damn her shit fat. You be thinking like damn her shit hairy. Like that yeah. why it's fat. <laughs> Like nigga like that shit. <laughs> that I, is not sexy. Like I like that shit. What? Like, I want. I want That's my shit to look sexy. like that. Like it's in the in the summertime. It it, it drips sweat and like it, it makes yeah. I don't care. You nigga want that natural scent. That natural wild scent. It just make you feel like you fucking animals mating. Oh my that god. Scent. <laughs> like for real. So you a different breed type of dude, I feel like. I like that. So you a pheromone type of guy. Yeah, That's, pheromone. That, nah, nah, yeah. If, it, if it got an odor to me, I'm out. Nah, nah I'm me. out. Mm-hmm. But I, I get it, though. We all have some stank good pussy. <laughs> <laughs> 
We all don't have some stinky <laughs> good pussy. Girl. That's like saying we all have some some good stinky dick. Y'all have. Not I think girls get more stinky dick day. than dudes get stinky vagina. For real. I guarantee you, no bitch is gonna fuck a nigga with a stinky dick. I disagree. I disagree. I've been times at the football practice where girls are not caring. I know. I'm like, I mean, that's football practice, but just like a regular stinky dick for no reason, just because you got hair and and you sweating. Uh, that's not sexy. I don't know. I can't mess with a girl that stink. I feel like when girls stink, y'all stink differently. It's a whole aggressive, yeah, different stink. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's, it's like it's like death. Oh, stink as fuck. But oh. I feel like if you stink, that means something is wrong. If a woman stink, that means something is wrong. There's not no sweat. That means they got some type of bacterial, some situation mm. going on. If they smell like that. Mm. That's that's real. Yeah, definitely. So I saw this um, this weird ass. Who was it? Video on Instagram the other day. This is random as hell. But the dude, I don't know if he was a comedian, but he made a, a video about he in love with a stud. Oh my God, I seen that, that shit one. Had that shit, <laughs> <laughs> that shit had me dying. That shit had me dying. Did you see that? You haven't seen it? Nigga was like, yo, the stud was pushing him on the sway. That shit had me crying. You and think- like, the stud tried to, somebody tried to holler at the, at, at the dude, and the stud was like, Bitch, what you want over my nigga, bitch? Or some <laughs> shit. And then the girl was like, I'll see you later. Now you ain't gonna see shit, bitch. Like, just it's all so out wild. like a nigga, like dressed like a dude, everything. If a dude in love with a stud, that nigga gay. Yeah, that's what it is. Because the stud wanna be a boy, right? Yeah. But they have some pretty studs, some studs that are cute. She still got a vagina, though. Hey, man, I can't do it. Now, if he gets smashed down with a strap, that's probably the, what's the, going the, on. That's probably what's happening. That's gay to mm. y'all? If for a dude to get smashed booty, with a strap, no booty play. No, that's yeah, not gay yeah. to me. That's, that's not, not gay. Me. Booty play like what? Like, like girl eating your ass. That's girl not gay. Girl eating your me. ass or like finger. I get ass. my ass. Hey, that's cool with me. Yeah, get in there. <sighs> get in there. It's like let me lift my left leg. There you go. Like if a girl eat my ass, I don't think I'll fuck with her no more. Why? Like a, it's your you, ass. Like, bitch, you nasty. Like. I mean, I think about like, damn, I know the type of shits I done taken. And you took this route. That's, yeah, that's like, old bitch, as hell. You nasty as fuck. I mean, I don't think it's nasty if your ass is clean. That's that's real. But your, if your G spot is in your ass and you want to please your man and it's in the ass, well, you got to get to it some way somehow. Uh, in the ass, you kind of just different. Now you say in the ass. The G spot is in the ass. It's in I'm the just ass. saying, but no girl is getting in my ass. You can. Lick the asshole I mean, or lick around it. The clit is right there, but it's not in there. If That's you different lick for it, girls. y'all clit is in y'all ass, basically. This, y'all different for girls. I, I feel like as a dude, I don't think, I put it like this. If you a dude and at any point in time, you get penetrated or have penetrated a man. Turn that on. Anytime you have penetrated or been penetrated by a man, you gay. Yeah, you are. Um, I ain't no questions about that. Of course, yeah, I do. Gay. I think any most things that you do with a female, like ninety nine percent of the things that you do with a female, is not gay. But mm-hmm. the moment a female puts on the penis and beat a dude down from the back with a penis, you're gay. Super gay. You out of there? There's no coming I, back. I, for I that. guess you're right. And if you're a dude so. and you sitting there and she got on a, a strap on and you sucking the strap on. No, that's, that's definitely that. gay. Oh, that's gay. You should not want to suck any, anything. I'm just saying. So that's where, that's my caveat. So a girl licking your ass, in my opinion, that's not gay. That's kinky. A finger in the ass to me, that's not gay either. That's kinky because every dude, if you want to live, eventually you're going to have to go to the doctor. The doctor <laughs> going to have to stick his finger in that's your true. ass for you to determine if you got prostate cancer or not. Uh, but the strap, that's when they become butt plugs. Okay. Mm. To me, mm. you have now crossed over to some the other people side. are just openly sexual. Like some people just really are, and that's fine. People, and and that's fine if if you are openly sexual. I'm not against that. That's cool. I don't think anything's wrong with butt play for dudes. I don't think it's gay. I think it's sex. I think it's I mean, if you like it, you like it. Even if you gay, I mean, shoot, you gay. That's up to you. I mean, what you suck don't make me nuts. So it don't make no difference to me. So, but in my opinion, if my homeboy's like, yeah, bro, I bet this bad bitch, bro, we went to her house, she put on the strap and beat me down. <laughs> Nigga, gay, man. That's gay. <clears throat> and it's cool if you're gay. I'm just saying, but that is gay. If you ask me, like, okay, friend, they not, you can't say you're bisexual as a dude because that don't exist. You know, you're gay. 
So that's my opinion. Bisexual and dudes doesn't exist. You, you can't like girls nah, and guys. Nah, ain't no such thing as no bisexual dude. Yo ass gay. You can't like girls and guys if you're a dude. Nah, bro. Yo ass gay. Man. I mean, you could now. double dip. You just can't. The title of gay will not stick to you, buddy. You are gay. That's just what it is. I know a guy who likes girls and guys. Like he he has a he has fucked dudes and he has a girlfriend. That, that's cool. It's, but I don't consider gay. him gay though. I think I consider him bisexual. I mean, it's different when you have the LGBTQ gay the community. They are very very particular about that shit. I mean, that's cool. Did, did it die out? Let me see. Oh no, we gonna out. we gonna take a quick break. Let's switch out the battery anyway. He sound like he might be asleep. Okay. All right, so Calamar, let me ask you. How did you know that you were funny? That made you want to be a comedian, for real, for real? I think I, um, I've been funny all my life, but I ain't take the comedy series to um, 2017. And I actually was in a relationship, going through some dark times. Because how I got into the comedy, I was rapping at first, and I had, um, I always wanted to sign with T.I. Mm -hmm. And I remember, like, 2015, he pulled up the club Onyx, and I had a CD for him, and it was actually, the cover of that CD was his cover of Urban Legend, but it was just me. Like, I had bought the jacket and everything. Mm -hmm. So when he pulled up, you know, um, I waited out there for, like, three, four hours. I had spoke with Trader True. And like his manager and everything, they was like, he gonna be pulling up soon. I'm gonna make sure like you talk to him and stuff like that. So when he pulled up, he was like on the right, he was in the back seat on the passenger side. He had some bitch to his left, it wasn't tiny. And then he had his driver. Mm -hmm. So um, I had gave him my CD or whatnot. I had gave him a birthday gift. It was a foxtail and shit like that. So he was, when he looked at the CD, he chuckled to himself. He was like, you sure you want me to listen to this? And I was like, hell yeah, that's the hardest thing out right now. And the CD was called Best Thing Since Tip. So he put the shit in his back seat and got out and went in the club. So I, my whole time, I was just thinking like, yeah, when he get back in, like when he leave the club, he ain't going to have no choice but to listen to that shit because he going to see it. So I was like, man, shit, I, and he going to call me. So like two months went by, I ain't getting no calls. <laughs> so I was just fucking mad. I was in a relationship. I was just mad at my girl. And then I was like, man, I am I need to find something to do. I was like, I'm finna talk about your ass. So then I got on stage, and then my whole material was about relationships and shit, and it was about her. Then people found that shit funny, and I was like, damn, this something I could be good at, and I just kept from there. Okay. So um, first show, when was, like, your very, very first show? <laughs> what was that like? My first show, I actually got paid. Like, oh, damn, and, and a lot of comedians was mad. They were like, "Man, you, like, you getting paid already?" It was just forty dollars, but I was happy as fuck. Like, damn, <laughs> like he thought I was good enough to pay me. And then shit, it just went from there. Like, I started making a name for myself. And then, like I say, like I started becoming a threat to people. Motherfuckers stopped putting me on their shows, and I just got on the internet. How long have you been doing? I don't think we asked you. How long have you been um stand up comedian? Since October 17, 2017. October 2017. Hey man, you were very seasoned. Consistent. And seasoned for that. That's a, a like a short period of time. That's you why I say it? like these niggas that's like real. niggas niggas afraid of me. Like, like, I don't mean to be sounding like arrogant and shit, but I be just be telling um saying what people tell me. Like, man, you a threat. Like people always tell you, like you a threat to these niggas out here and shit like that. So I be looking at it like, damn, maybe I am. Like, I'm just trying to work, <laughs> shit. Do you feel like it necessarily has to be a threat, or is that just a perception? Like, is it enough room for all comedians? Or nah, is it, it ain't. Or it is, really is, like, hey, I got to beat this yeah. competition. Yeah. The reason why I go so hard, because I, I develop the mentality like I'm blackballed from the game. So mm -hmm. that's why I go so hard. I be like, man, they blackballing me, man. They ain't putting me on their shows. Because like I say, like, it be a lot of comedians on flyers and the person who putting together a show a comedian himself. So that's the reason why he putting these niggas on the show, because he know that he funnier than them. So I just be looking at it like, man, they know like they ain't going to put me on this show. They think I'm going to get all the hoes and shit like that. So I was like, man, I just want to work. I go to my show. After my set, I leave. Yeah. I ain't trying to mingle with nobody and shit like that. Then when I do got a show, you ain't going to know I'm in the building, because I like to remain mysterious till it's time for me to hit the stage and shit like that. Okay. 
So you got a competition tomorrow, show tomorrow. Kind of give us a, a a breakdown and a run through and a time and all that stuff about the show tomorrow. Well, the competition, I actually performed in it last year. Okay. But I ain't make it out the second round because it's, it's a numbers game. You feel me? Like how they do it, you know, um, after the show or whatnot, they pull up this link that everybody got to go to and they vote and shit like that. So basically, you just got to bring people out. Because last week, I seen the unfunny motherfucker <laughs> like make it to the next round, but they only made it because they brought a lot of people out. Mm. So I was like, damn, this is what I'm up against. You feel me? Like, motherfuckers ain't going by just pure funny and right. pure talent. It's about like how many people you can bring out. And they do it like that because the club want to make their money mm. from like drinks and food and shit like that. So I like, this year, like, I'm going to make sure I bring a lot of people out. And I think a lot of people going to come out because this year. We in there tomorrow. Yeah. Appreciate definitely. that. Appreciate that. I'm going to do my high pitch screen. And I, look, <laughs> and I think I think this year I'm going to make it because, like like I say, like last year I wasn't doing, like, the internet skit. So I don't kind of built, like, a little fan base mm-hmm. and shit like, where people want to come see. Like, I want to, like, people be thinking, like, I want to know if this nigga, like, really funny, like, on stand-up type shit. Mm-hmm. But sometimes, like, I go live. On my set, you feel me? Just to see, just to show people, like, you know, like, just to give them something to watch. And a lot of comedians, they ain't gonna go live because they gonna feel like, they probably feel like, man, I might bond. What if I bond tonight? Right. What if I don't do good? I don't wanna put this shit on live. Mm-hmm. And then people think, like, I'm going live. I know I'm finna kill this. Other. Well, I guess then, wouldn't some people want not wanna go live? Because if you got like your set, you don't want to go live because if you go somewhere else, you don't want people to be like, okay, and that's, that's the, the same set. That, look, that's another thing. Like me, I write every day. I write new shit every day. So okay. I ain't afraid to go live Like, because next time you see me, it's going to be some whole different shit. Mm. What influenced you to, like, how, what influences your, your comedy? Like, like you said, everyday life or? Yeah, um, I just think about, like, shit I've been through. And now that I'm older, I can talk about it now and talk about it my way. Like, some of my jokes, my mama even hit me up, like, damn, boy, you remember that? Mm-hmm. This type of shit, like, hell yeah, I remember that shit. And plus, like, I'm the only child, so I was just stuck oh, with wow. my, I was oh, just, I was just always stuck with my imagination. So, a lot of that shit come from, like, my imagination and, and shit that I seen. And I just know how to write that shit and make it funny. Because, like I said, if it's funny in my head, I'm going to say it. And normally, if it's funny in my head, it's probably gonna be funny to y'all because I ain't just gonna, I ain't gonna deliver that shit halfway. I'm gonna make sure. Yeah, I got two kids, two daughters, um, 11 Mm -hmm. and two. My 11 year old live in Florida. My two year old live in Louisville. I'm finna go, you know, pick up once I leave here. Okay. Type shit. Man, two daughters. Yeah, man. I ain't stopping till I get a son. (laughs) Oh lord. Good luck. (laughs) God has shown. I guess karma. I must live life right because I got my boy first and my girl second. So I must been doing something right if that's karma. Yeah. Right? You have. So you've been fucking up somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I've <laughs> yeah, been, you been doing somebody yeah, wrong. I've been doing a lot of women wrong, man. I'm still going to keep. What did that post <laughs> wow. I just made? What that, what that post I just made? He literally made a post that said, uh, if I did you wrong in 2019. Next year. Right? Same time, same place, bitch. <laughs> like, <laughs> for, <laughs> for real. I ain't playing with you. You trying to get stabbed in 2020. He a player. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with it. As long as they know. You put the disclaimer out there so they know what they're doing. And, and I made another post, I think, two days ago. I said, I'm going to start lying to women because I think I'll be too honest and too real. Like, women ask me what I want, and I just be like, man, I just want to be friends and fuck until I can figure this shit out. So now I just said, I'm, like, I'm going to start lying to women and tell them I want to be in a relationship and just... Finesse them out the pussy Because that's what they used to Because then they're going to be crazy Hey man Like all this being honest And keeping it real Like it's keeping me it's From a setup. not getting none It's a setup. <laughs> it's <laughs> They setting you up As a crash dummy Like bro just be real Just tell me what you really want And then you just Jump your ass off that cliff And then they This shit get shut down on you Hey I'm going to keep Yeah just start lying then, that's why, Yeah that's yeah. why I'm going to start yeah. lying I'm just <laughs> I, I want to be in a relationship I want a family I'm not a good I liar. want that big house With Wait, the fence I think I did see you Post that on Facebook Yeah so He want a family He want to settle down <laughs> <laughs> Yeah I'm lying now It's 2020 I'm lying All 2020 Hey you going to win Because cheaters win That's mm-hmm. what they say right do your kids influence your comedy a little bit? Cause like I said, you got two girls. Do you ever like incorporate shit that they do? Cause you grew up Not single, yet. like by yourself. So I don't, I don't incorporate them in my material. I'm still too busy talking about my relationships and my family and shit. 
So that's so, what sparks up that that fire in you talking about your relationships, like with your family, and then maybe your girlfriend or some shit like that. Yeah, like a lot of comments think I'm like a gigolo and shit like that from my material, but it's just like that's what I really been through, and you can tell like. A com a, a comedian when he on stage talking about females, like you can tell he lying. You can look at him and like just like nigga, you ain't got no hoes type <laughs> shit. But a motherfucker look at it, this shit believable. Like yeah, he probably did go through that shit. You feel me? Especially the way you talk too. Like the way you talk is believable. Like I watched your stand up and I was like, okay, I feel like this nigga telling the truth. I am. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't tell the truth when they comedy. They just say whatever. My down, shit buddy. be true. Tick, have you had a chance to see him in person yet? No, this is my first time seeing him in person. So you never saw him stand up in person? Not in person. I Y'all got to come tomorrow, man. I saw it firsthand, so I, but we going to be there tomorrow. Y'all yeah. got to come tomorrow, man. No, so I'll be there. Tinker might not show up. She be flaking. I'm definitely going to show up, okay? But I, I'm, I'm going to be there with body paint on, bro. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Lit. You got to come. I my high put screen. how you come, just come. You know, so I'm in there like I've been there. Pause. And it's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be jumping too, man. Like every year, this little, this little competition be jumping, man. And that improv got that little bar right yes. there. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Improv night really be lit. I'm yeah. not even gonna lie, it be lit. Yeah. I'll go there than I rather go there than go to the club. Well, it's tomorrow Sunday. Yep. That's the Lord's Day. Yep. No, fuck it. We just go. <laughs> actually, actually, I think Saturday is the Lord's Day. The oh, Sabbath. yeah. Yeah, the Sabbath. Sabbath. Yeah. What is your okay. religion? Christian. Christian. But you still a, go by the Sabbath? It's a church in Fort Worth. They had a church on Saturday. I, always, I told them I got to visit that church. Mm-hmm. Like, they, like, they, 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 yeah, they believe they believe in that. And it's like a whole, it's like a black church, too. Like, none but black bitches walking up out there. <laughs> 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 them hoes coming out, stepping, fine. Cause nah. I be like the reason why I see it, cause I be on my way to the parlay place to like bet my um, place my little bets and shit. Mm. You know they be having church and shit on Saturday. I'm like, man, I gotta visit that church. I think that I want to make that my church home. That's why I stopped going to black churches. Why? Cause black women be thinking they slick. <laughs> like you go to black churches, they be wearing tight ass <laughs> yeah, pants. Yeah. yeah. And they swear to God they be praising the Lord and they get the jumping up and down and, with that ass, get the and bounce. The blues be out. Yeah, you I can't help but lust in church. I'm like, you can't. I was like, bro, I'm not focused on the Lord. <laughs> not this sermon. She up here slain in the spirit. That ass just clapping away. Yeah. I said, you can get you my ass You know what they say? They say Christian women go to church to find a man. Yeah, they I'm, do. I'm lusting. The pastor. You must he be winning. I say, say I'm lusting in church. Oh, you lusting. Yeah, that's tough. See, that's tough. Y'all go by the Sabbath too. I got a Muslim dad and an Israelite mom. So they both go off of the Sabbath. Tomorrow I'm speaking on that on stage about For real? my yeah, my auntie was dating this Muslim nigga with no voice. Like what <laughs> you mean he what? couldn't talk? Like nigga had one of them things you put to your Wow. Head. He was a mother. I'm I'm like that's gonna be a that's a yeah. new that's a new joke too. Like even though it's a competition, like I'm finna say that shit. Like most people like get up there like <laughs> Say they original material, like, nah, I'm talking about that. I got, like, whole new shit I'm finna talk about tomorrow. Damn, so how does he... Well, I guess he can be Muslim with no voice, I guess. I mean, you... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how but, does but, he... But, like, which Muslim, though? Like, is he nation of Islam Muslim? Yeah, and look... Like, bean pie, my brother? Look how I wrote the shit. That shit gonna be funny. Like, it's gonna make sense, and it's gonna be funny. Watch when y'all hear that shit. I'm gonna check it out, man. I'm, I'm gonna be there. What time? It started at 7. Seven. Oh, yeah, that, and that's a number for me. I'm a number guy. Yeah. So seven is a good time for me at I'm all gonna time. I'm going to have to find your numerology number. You, seven. Man. It's seven? My first really? name got seven letters. My middle name got seven it letters. My last name got seven letters. My, my, my birth month is eight, August, but that's a new beginning, so I'm cool with that. If you add my address up, it's seven. Yeah. Oh, my damn, son's so birthday was born. Me. My son was born 313. That's seven. Damn. And that's Detroit area code. I'm seven all day. You feel me? Damn. Yeah, at least you're solid and you know that's hey, your number. No, yeah. no. God in the flesh. God the mogul. I tell people all the time, God the Father, yeah. God the Son, the Holy Spirit, uh, God the mogul. I'm right there. Okay. So is Christianity you off limits? Yeah, she just dismissed my shit. <laughs> 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 I, I, I know. just dismissed my shit. Like, no, I know you're okay, God. Okay, tri- I think all black, I, not just all black men, all Israelite men, because I'm going to go off a big of Israelite. Yeah, we Hebrew God, Israelites. Right. I'm not an yeah. Israelite. God-like. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Yeah, we the real Hebrew Israelites, man. Deep. See, you. I'm from you, Nigeria. You woke. How the hell I'm from Israel? You you know you're from Your Nigeria. Descendants. Yeah. Well, that's most of our descendants are from West Africa. Am I right, Kalamar? Yeah. How the hell is Israel in Nigeria? It's not in Nigeria, but we migrated through slavery. Where? 
through slavery. We when? migrated back in the day, back in the gap before, before that? Christ. They'll just be saying shit. That's why I be having Christ, something. One thing about that shit, like we'll never know the truth. Right. Like shit. Black people, shit. we be claiming stake to everything and be losing it all. It just proves how much we be letting niggas just take everything from us. We created this. And why we ain't got it? They'll no never take hip hop from us. Oh, they try the money. Shit. They ain't gonna never take that from us. They, they, they got us selling our soul over diamond teeth and chain. I don't think people, I don't believe in that selling your soul shit. It just like, Anything. you don't believe in Illuminati? It's just like, I used to, but then it's like, man. You went to jail, didn't you? Yeah, I've been to prison. Yes, I yes, went to jail the... three times. I did four years in prison. I oh, really, yeah. the day I got released from prison, August 17, 2012, I went from my jail cell to the Greyhound station straight to Texas. Like, I ain't never looked back. I ain't been to Florida. Wow. Well, I went to Florida last year, but, you know, I got out on a mission type shit. Tell who us that lives journey. Here, then? Mm-hmm. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. That's a good question. I'm like, who lives here? Like, why did you come to Texas? Then? Uh, Actually, um, my mom, she moved here 2010. And she was like, you know, son, when you get out, you know, just come here. I'm going to help you get on your feet. And she actually just moved to Georgia last year, uh, 2018. So that's why I made that post. Like, I'm out here all by myself. I ain't got no family. I'm like, literally, that's what made me go hard. Because, like, I got to make something to myself. Like, I ain't got nobody out here. So I'm just out here. First day in prison, what was that like? First day in prison, that shit was terrifying goddamn shit that shit was scary as fuck because like in jail like i was like you know like this jail like nigga get out do what they gonna do come back like but in prison you with motherfuckers who been down like 40 30 years who accustomed to this shit you feel me then like they got some shit called toh test the heart Mm. like when you walk in that hole like you gonna think everything's sweet then, like, a week later, motherfucker, tap your bump. Hey, come on, slide to the grid. You like, what the fuck the grid is? The grid is where you are, where your ass got to go fight type shit. So, like, motherfucker, tap my bump. I'm thinking this finna be a one-on-one. I fought some um, I fought some Zoe niggas, like, ZML, Zoe Mafia family. Oh, shit. Them niggas told my ass, so I'm talking about broomstick. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, them niggas, <laughs> them niggas told my ass up. Boy, I'm like, hey, I had to fight back, though, like, showing, because, like, if your ass don't fight back, you show you pussy, you going to end up, like, whatever money you get, you got to get them a percentage of the shit. And, like, I'm like, nigga, like, nigga, my mama sent me this. I ain't getting my mama. <laughs> I'm the only child, too. Michelle money can't go away. So then I initially got my respect. And my four years went by, like, super fast, because all I did was gamble, smoke, and eat. Like, once you prove yourself, like, you got a little heart, like, motherfuckers ain't gonna fuck with you and shit. And that's why, like, when motherfuckers join gangs, I believe, like, that gang, all that gang shit fake to me. Like, mm-hmm. if it ain't from California or New York, mm-hmm. like, all that shit, I feel like people join gangs for, like, protection and mm-hmm. to eat and shit like that and get some money. Like, you just using your brothers and shit because you ain't got shit. It's networking. Yeah, yeah that's why I, I ain't never join. I'm neutral. I'm Jimmy Neutron in prison, man. You feel me? Like, I ain't doing nothing like that. So you was kicking it with everybody. Yeah, everybody like everybody like fuck with me and shit. You feel me? So, so but yeah. I ain't gonna lie. Like niggas, like like if you a neutron, like say like say like you come in prison, like and I'm a neutron. Like what's, what's a neutron? Like just you neutral. Okay, you feel you. you ain't in no game. Like but like it ain't sweet though. Like like I'm a neutron. You come to prison. Nigga might come to you like, hey, go fight that new nigga who just came in. Let's see what he got type shit. They gonna use you to see what he got. This nigga might. Come from the street, boxing, beat your ass type shit. Some MMA but they just shit. they just want to see what he got type mm-hmm. shit. You feel me? So it was a lot of that going on. I had I to see. fight. A, I had to fight a few niggas and shit. Like I lost a couple fights. Like niggas like come to find out these niggas was boxing on the street type shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But that shit, that shit got my fight game up though. Like it taught me how to be swift and all type of shit. You feel me? So I beat a nigga ass on the streets though. You and you're a tar, so you have a, a attitude problem. Yeah, that shit don't mean nothing. Yeah, yeah that shit don't mean nothing in prison. Like I mean, then, like niggas getting being like a Taurus. Man, I was in prison. I remember like when they shipped me to the adult camp. I seen a nigga with like titties like big like this. <laughs> like I'm talking about nigga like the punks. They tricking niggas out of their sexuality. It's niggas getting married on the rec yard. Niggas melting Jolly Ranchers, using it as lip gloss. Niggas shaving their eyebrows wow. off, getting tatted permanent eyebrows like women wow. and shit. That shit real in prison. The punks, as they call it. Yeah, the punks. The booty bandits, niggas. Booty uh, bandits. Niggas killing niggas over them punks. 
And so, wow. Yeah, you get killed like for even speaking to a punk or you looking at a what? punk wrong, trying to holler at a punk. If he with somebody, nigga finna kill your ass. Damn. Weird. That shit real, but prison is a whole different world. Like <laughs> jail and prison is totally different. Yeah, I went to jail and I was like, this is cool. Like I went to jail for like two weeks. And I was like, yeah. But like, you go to prison, bad. you gotta understand Take this way. You a thug. This way motherfuckers Low living. key. Low key. A little bit. But yeah, man, people don't even know that, man. People just think I'm just a funny comedian type shit. So, well, I know you tomorrow. We catch you at Improv Arlington, seven p.m. <laughs> last topic before you get out. And I probably should have saved this topic, but I'm gonna, I want to put it out there. The last debate is what qualifies somebody to be a street nigga. You went to prison. You did your time. You big. You made it out. You know what I'm saying? You had you earned your stripes. But every time in hip hop, you ever hear everybody saying, "I'm from the streets, mm-hmm. nigga. I'm in the streets. I'm from the streets. I do the streets. I'm a real street nigga." What qualifies somebody to be an official street dude or from the streets? Uh, uh I think the qualification of being a street nigga is you actually giving back to the streets. Mm. Positivity. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah. That that then you can say like, if you come from them streets. And you giving back, then you a street nigga. Like, if you, but how do you determine if you come from the streets? Shit, like, you ain't grow up with no silver spoon. You ain't grow up in the suburbs. Like, you come from the streets now. Like, we, I'm probably sure we all came from the streets. But for us to call ourselves like a street cat or a street person, you know, like, you got to give back to the streets. Because when I hear rappers hit saying, like, hey, I'm from the streets, you know what I'm saying? I be thinking so like you on some big big meats type mm-hmm. shit. Like you a nah. boss out here. But like if you a person that's doing like diamond nicks, you from the street. If you was just like, you know, tomorrow I decide I want to be a rapper. So to be a successful rapper kit, if I go out and I get me two dime bags a week and a nick bag, and I can go out here and try to sell these two, even if these four packs, even if I don't sell them all, because I attempted to, I am now. A nigga in the streets. Man, when I was selling dope, the most the most I got up to was two ounces. Like, <laughs> and that's a lot though. Like two yeah. ounces of cocaine really? just to oh, flip, yeah, so you the, yeah, to cook that shit and flip it. Mm-hmm. Like that's the most like I ever got to. Like I ain't like I wasn't selling no bricks or keys or just two ounces. And then ever since then, like I ain't seen no more than that. So that that would that qualify you? I guess that's your rapper startup kit. So you can really say you from the streets, but you can because you did a bid. Yeah. You did a bit. I went to jail three times, and they they were like, "Fuck that! We've been sending you to prison. You ain't learning your lesson." Then I learned my. I took me one time for prison. I learned my lesson. <laughs> I like okay. I don't want to live here. Like this is where <laughs> niggas actually living at, and niggas don't develop and got comfortable. I'm like, I ain't trying to live like this. That's why when I, as soon as I got out, Greyhound Station straight to Texas. Like, cause I know if I would went back to Florida. I probably it ain't no opportunities in Florida neither. Like it's easy to get a job up here type oh, shit. Yeah. You feel me? I know if I would have went back to Florida, it probably would have been the same shit. You feel me? So you yeah, know, yeah. I just came up here. Apartment falling in the sinkhole or some shit. Yeah. Y'all got a lot of shit going on in Florida. Yeah, so I came here for a new change and new beginning type shit. I don't know, man. Tinker, you got anything you want to add to it or anything else? Or? Uh, I mean, congratulations. I mean, like I said, I've seen you on on online, and I think you're funny as hell, and I hope to see you go bigger from here. Thank you, man. Thank you. So I can be like, I know him. I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. I appreciate (laughs) this platform, too, man. She's going to hit you on that DM, $2 million. I'm like, hey. If you got four, you spending it? I'm like, man, we talked about 200 last time (laughs) I seen you. (laughs) That was the... (laughs) We agreed on 200. Last time I seen you. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, man. Y'all go check them out tomorrow, Arlington Improv. You know what I'm saying? 7 p.m. We'll be there. And, man, we definitely, I got to see you in person. And I know you funny as hell. I'm going to get to see you tomorrow. Me and Tinker, we're going to pull up, man. We definitely wishing the best for you. Um, before you get out, where can everybody find you on your social media? Uh, on Facebook, Calamar White. Just Calamar, C-A-L-I-M-A-R, last name White. Then on Instagram, is Calamar underscore white. C A L A C A L I M A R underscore white. There you go, man. Y'all know what it is, man. Please subscribe. Uh, Mogul Moves Only here on YouTube. 
Remember, thank you for all who all out there streaming, listening on Spotify, Apple Music, iHeartRadio, all that good stuff, man. Y'all know my beautiful co-host, Tinka. I really appreciate you. I appreciate you, It's all It's always fun bringing that other perspective. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, uh, hey, this is another episode of Mogul Moves Only with your boy, Big D the Mogul, and my lovely co-host. Tinka. And we'll see y'all next time. Peace.